why I think I fight. Do I enjoy it? No. Do I enjoy training? No. Do I enjoy cutting weight? No. Am I nervous? Yes. Do I think to myself, what am I doing? Yes. Completely. Unfortunately, it's one of those things you're either born with or you're not. And the only way I can explain it, to try and make it make any sense, is that if I'm not doing something which is either extremely difficult or extremely stressful, I'm in a perpetual state of crippling boredom. I can't explain it. I see other people live their lives and they're like, oh, I can't wait for the weekend because I want to watch this movie. I think who cares about a movie? You're looking forward to the weekend for a movie? You're looking forward to the weekend to get drunk? Like these things to me are so mundane. They mean nothing. And if I don't fight, if I'm not in a situation where I'm stressed or worried or concerned, I'm just perpetually bored. And boredom's crippling. If you're an intelligent person and you've got a good brain on your shoulders, you can't just sit there bored. You know? So most smart people take the academic route to avoid boredom. They learn, 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 learn. But that's never really interesting. Either. Although I've always been an intelligent guy and I've always done well academically, it, was, it never really interested me. And then I see people climb Mount Everest or jump off buildings or do base jumping or the guy who jumped from space. People think, what's he doing? He's crazy. I understand because some people can live normal lives. Some people cannot just function nine to five office job, get drunk at the weekends. That is not for some individuals and it's not for me. So I have to find something which keeps me physically tired enough to stop me going AWOL. Um, and mentally tired enough, and I've chosen fighting, because without this, when I'm not in training, I wake up every day and think, okay, what am I going to do today? It's 9 a.m. on a Tuesday, I'm bored, everyone's at work, I'm bored, and I'll end up doing something crazy. I'll either end up drunk, or, or on the Eurostar, or, you know, it's just, it's just a random lifestyle, because I'm constantly looking for never-ending entertainment, and it doesn't exist. I think the only thing that could stop me fighting is if I had enough money to constantly entertain myself. Unless I'm a billionaire, I need something that keeps me focused and keeps me occupied in life. With fighting, I have to train twice a day and I have to train hard. And the stress can be, the stress it brings in every aspect can replace fun. And my mind is occupied. It occupies me. It's the only way I can try and explain it. It occupies me. And I could never stop doing this even if I lost a hundred fights because I'm not built to live a normal existence. I can't do it. I couldn't just have a kid and some girl and sit at home and work a little bit and relax. I've never relaxed in my entire life. I don't know what relaxing is. It's just not me. I was a four-time kickboxing world champion. For 12 years, I trained five hours a day, six days a week. And I was motivated to train probably about 25% of the time. The rest of the time I went because I am disciplined. You don't feel like going through that shit on a Wednesday morning when you wake up, but you have to do it because you're disciplined. You're either a disciplined individual or you are not a disciplined individual. There's, there's, there's a difference between want and want. And I say this all the time. People say to me, I want to be rich. And I say, okay, well, I want to be able to ice skate, but I don't want to be able to ice skate enough to go learn how to ice skate because I can't be bothered. I, I mean, surely if I could click my fingers and be a figure skater, I'd, I'd click my fingers. Who wouldn't? But I don't want to actually go train because it's, I, don't, I don't want it enough. And this is the exact point with money. Everyone wants money put on their lap. If you truly wanted money, you wouldn't be able to sleep until you fucking had it. And this is the point. Because when I had nothing, I couldn't be distracted. You couldn't distract me from what I wanted. That's who I am. If I want something, I'm going to get it. I, I do not need to be motivated. I'm a disciplined person. If I allocate X amount of time to work, I'm going to do it. But that is the bottom line answer. It's discipline. You're going to have to work when you don't feel like working. That's how it's going to have to be, or you're never going to be any. One of the only things in this world you can control is your state of mind. You can't control the weather. You can't control other people. You can't even control your health. You might get a brain hemorrhage, or you might get hit by a bus. One of the very few things in the world you have genuine control over is your state of mind. You decide if you're a disciplined person. You decide if you're a happy person. You decide if you're a uh, depressed person. These are things that in real time you can affect in your brain. This is all you can control on Earth. If you can't control that, then you're just a feather in the wind. And life's going to blow you around and you might land somewhere good. You might land in dog shit. Nobody knows. Your state of mind is what you should be able to control. If you can't wake up and say, today I'm making some money and actually try your very, very best and actually stay dedicated to that task. If you can't do that, you're fine. Every man understands you shouldn't be complaining about things you cannot change. 
You have to play the cards you're dealt. To be born a certain height and then to sit there and go, what do I do? I'll tell you what you do. You become the best version of yourself, just like everyone else does. Nothing about the height is in and of itself enough value for me to be a valuable man. As a man, you build your value. You are born with the cards you're dealt. Sure, it'd be ideal. Look, I'd love to be seven foot tall. I'm not. So it's the same argument. If you're five foot two, you need to become rich, strong, and funny, and charismatic, and interesting, and witty. If you're six foot four, you need to become rich, strong, well-connected. It's the same game. So to sit there and complain about it is asinine. All of you have a handful of instances. I don't think you understand that. You could have been in a car crash at four years old and lost your legs. Do you have any understanding of how lucky you have been? This is pure luck. There's no re- This only luck has kept you fully able-bodied, sitting there, capable of learning and listening and becoming something. You don't really need to be that tall if you're important and rich, and when you walk in the room, you think when fucking Mayweather walks in the room, people give a shit? Fix that frame in your mind. You are viewing yourself as a short man. Stop it. Walk the fuck up and be the man. You talk a lot about purpose, why we are created as humans and why we are here. Like, what is the purpose of life? Why have we been given life? I think we're here to struggle and to learn. I don't think we're here to be happy. That's why when we keep going back to the happy argument, I've always found that kind of frustrating and annoying. Yeah. And someone goes, oh, but I want to be happy. Why? Why? Like, I, why do you want to sit there and laugh? Like, like you're, you were happy your entire childhood. That's your happy days. You're allowed to be happy as That's a kid. It. It's all over now, right? You, you're a man. You have responsibilities. I think we're here to do important things, and important things are going to be difficult, and they're going to be hard, and you're going to get frustrated. But that's what gives you purpose. I think we're here to struggle. I think we're here to endure pain. Yeah. I think we're here to just see how hard we are to kill. I yeah. think that going through terrible things and living through them and, mm. and coming out the other side is one of the most fantastic things about being human. Uh, I think that it's, it's almost like once you understand what life is really about, there's no emotion which isn't enjoyable. The only emotional state which can be seen as detrimental is feeling nothing at all. But if you're sitting at home and you're feeling truly heartbroken, at least you're feeling something, right? At least, and, yeah. and, and I think that's the whole part of being human. I, I think we're here to struggle. I think we're here to go through pain. I wake up each day and go, what can I attack? What problem can I solve? And, and look at history. Why did Genghis Khan wake up and want to conquer the whole world? Why did Napoleon conquer the world? Why did Alexander the Great conquer the just world? Mail. Just, yeah. you just wake up and just say, give me this, give me that. I want all of it. Yeah. There's an army there. They're really big. We're better. Yeah. It's intrinsic. You need to go and conquer. That's, that's the purpose of life. Do you believe that God created us? So why did God create us to struggle? Because yeah. if you don't struggle, you don't learn. God created us to learn and understand ourselves and understand other people and understand the world. And what did I say earlier? I said that you don't learn a lesson without pain. Mm. So you have to struggle to learn anything. Mm. There's only two ways to learn things, the hard way or the harder way. If you're smart, you can learn the hard way. But in my experience, 99% of the planet only learn the hardest possible way. If you want to feel happy inside of yourself and you want to feel content and you want yeah. to feel stable inside of yourself, you need to live true to God. And I'm not saying you can't drink a little bit of alcohol or not party or not have a little bit of fun, but you have to be a good person. I don't believe in the societal paradigms in which they have tried to construct this idea of happiness. I don't believe or subscribe to the way that happy and sad is currently un understood by the masses of the population. I think if you are anything less than absolutely yeah. distraught, you are happy. You're a version of happy. Uh, it's like saying gray is a version of black, right? No matter how light the gray is, you can still call it a version of black. And unless you've gone through an event, which hopefully doesn't happen too often, like the passing of a family member or something yeah. that's truly destructive and detrimental to your mindset, besides these events, which hopefully only happen a few times in your life, you should be happy. If you're not crying or paralyzed in silence due to the absolute magnitude of a detrimental circumstance or the absolute magnitude of a negative event, then you are a version of happy. So I am always happy is the short answer. I don't believe in not being happy. I don't believe in not saying to myself, I'm happy. I'm always a version of happy. And this chasing, this idea of chasing happiness and always being concerned and preoccupied with how happy you are is actually the biggest mistake that a lot of people make, I think, in the world today especially men who wake up and go, oh, I don't really feel happy, so I need to get happier. And that's how they end up down a yeah. hedonistic path of drugs or alcohol or chasing gambling, pleasure. chasing pleasure. I don't care how I feel. 
Yeah. I don't care if I feel happy or sad. It doesn't really affect what I do each day. I do the exact same things. I act the exact same way. I don't care. I don't put weight to the significance of the emotion. So I always consider myself a happy person, but if I woke up and I was slightly less happy one day than another, it wouldn't affect anything I do and I wouldn't put any relevance to it. Yeah. I'm human and that's life. So yeah, am I any happier now that I have hundreds of millions of dollars than before I was broke? Not really, but I was never unhappy. I'm, I'm, I'm the same state that I was then, that I am now. I have work to do and I will do it. It's, it's as simple as that. Well, also there's no light without dark and there's no joy without pain. You can't have a rainbow without a little rain. No matter how hard you chase pleasure and happiness, there's gonna be dips and troughs in between. There's gonna be come downs and downtrends and you're gonna have the juxtaposition between that time you were laughing your head off and acting giddish like a child and the time that you feel depressed as such. And I think it's much better to just adopt a very disciplined, stoic mindset. I'm always the same base level of happy regardless. If I lost all of my money today, I would be the same happy. Mm -hmm. If my net worth quadrupled, I'd be the same happiness. But as long as I'm alive and the people I, I care about and love are alive, and as long as I get as long as God gives me the honor of doing my duties and providing for the people I care about, as long as I get to wake up and know that there's a whole bunch of people in the world who need me and I get to work hard to please them and do good for society and good for the world, then then I'm I'm a vessel of God and I'm happy I'm happy enough to survive. That's that's all I look at it as. I don't ever consider how do I feel? That doesn't cross my mind. I have things to do. I, I'm too busy. I'm, I have things to do every single day. I have very important things to do. And how I feel really is not going to affect how I complete those tasks. Motivation isn't real. Everyone says this. Motivation is not real. Discipline's real. I do not feel like training, but I still train because I'm a disciplined individual. You don't get to go through life only doing the things you feel like doing. So this is down to you, my friend. And listen, you may be feel fired up for 10 minutes after this little talk, but you're not gonna feel fired up forever. You need to put systems in place. You need to get discipline. You need to get an atmosphere of people around you who are gonna keep you accountable and not make it easy for you to continue to be a fucking nobody. And then you're gonna fix your life. Otherwise, you're gonna stay a nobody. You're tired. You don't wanna work. You wanna go to sleep and just relax. You do it fucking anyway. That is the most basic imperative of the masculine frame which has been destroyed in real time. They are trying to convince you that you should act how you feel. You should show more of your feelings. If you feel this way, you should show it. If you want to cry, cry. What I'm saying is the reason they're trying to bring out emotionality in you is because of exactly what Myron said. Most of the time, you don't feel like doing the things you're supposed to do. But the true masculine frame throughout history was doing the things they didn't want to do, but they knew they had to do because they had honor and duty. That's what honor and duty means do you think the men on the titanic wanted to stay on the fucking titanic no we're men we have to stay we're scared but we must it's our duty to let the women and children on the lifeboats this is masculine duty a good man controls himself i have absolute self-control emotional control is absolutely and utterly important as a man i'm saying that you need to understand as a man there are certain principles under which you act, regardless of how you feel. I can wake up in a terrible mood. I can wake up sad. I can ache. I can have a, a busy day, stressed, etc. I will complete the same tasks as if I woke up in a fantastic mood. I'll do the same things because how I feel has no bearing on the things I'm going to do with my day because I have duty to myself and to my bloodline. Because you think there's something wrong with you. You go, well, I don't, I lack motivation. I don't have the motivation to go to the gym. Well, here's the news flash. Neither did I. And I still did it. So now what are you going to say? Now you have no excuse, right? Oh, you're scared to get in the ring. So was I. I still did it. Scared to get in the cage. So was I. I still did it. Being a man isn't about not feeling things. It's about acting the way you're supposed to act regardless of how you feel. We act. We're men of action. We get things done. So the world got built. All of it. All the men who built the skyscrapers felt scared, they did it anyway. You need to become a man of action. Stop worrying about how you feel and stop worrying about what you're supposed to be doing. How about that? I've, I've always been disciplined with myself because I've always lived a disciplined life. I lived in a disciplined household, like there was no such thing as I don't want to. So even now, if I wake up and I don't want to do something, I don't need someone to tell me to do it because I'll do it anyway. I mean, who wants to run a marathon? 
Nobody. Who wants to do that? You just do it, don't you? Because, you know, it's, a, it's the thing you're going to have to do. And you have to blood, sweat, tears. There is a version of the world where you can feel things and really not give a f how you feel. Like, I, I can... I, if I feel sad, it does not change how I act. And it does not change the things I do. If I don't feel like going to the gym, I go to the gym. If I don't feel like working, I will still work. If I wake up in a happy mood and I have a business to run, if I wake up in a sad mood, I have the same shit to do. I'm going to get it done. So where's the importance of it? It's in my mind, that's how I view it. Like, how does that affect what I'm going to do? Well, nothing. It doesn't. Motivation in and of itself is a scam. I don't believe in motivation. I believe in discipline. I am not motivated to do the things I'm supposed to do. I don't wake up full of like joy. I have to go to the gym or that I have to work or not deal with crap. I don't feel motivated to do them. I'm disciplined. I do them regardless of how I feel. Whether I'm in the mood to do it or I'm not in the mood to do it, it gets done. That's discipline. Discipline's a real thing. Motivation is fleeting. You're never going to be permanently motivated. If you're the kind of person who can only try hard at something he enjoys, then you're going to fail. If you truly want to win, you can't only want to win when you're happy and you can't only want to win when you're motivated. You're competing against men like me who will perform even when it's raining, not only when the sun is shining. And if you're going to be the kind of person who can only do it in one of those scenarios, you are going to lose. You must be prepared to perform all of the time. I have a lot of people who message me and say, oh, I struggle with motivation. And my answer is simple. Then stay a loser. If you can't find the motivation to not be a loser, then I strongly recommend you just stay a loser, stay in your lane, and stay out of my way. I have no time for people who cannot find the motivation to fix themselves and fix their own lives. I've been the kind of person who will perform seven days a week. It doesn't matter how I feel. It doesn't matter what's happened. It doesn't matter if I'm happy or sad. Things must be done. And this is the mindset you need to adopt if you want to be a winner. I think a man should have absolutely no interest in whether he's actually happy or not. If I wake up and I'm unhappy, I will do the exact same things as if I am happy. I will go to the gym the same. I will work the same. How I feel has no impact on how I live my life. I don't think happiness as an index is a healthy view for a man to have on life success. If you're waking up and going, oh, am I happy, am I not? You're looking at life wrong. I think of a man, if you put happiness far, if you move it down the scale, right? And you start looking at, am I successful? Am I competent? You know, am I achieving things? Am I respected? If you start to look at these indicators of your life, you're gonna end up being happier without actually analyzing if you're happy or not. You have to just work. At some point you have to bite the bullet and just work. Working harder is never gonna not help. No matter what scenario you're in, working harder is never gonna not help you. And it, it's amazing that I give different versions of the same answer for 99% of the questions I'm asked. Work harder. If you have a problem, whether you're broke, whether you're out of shape, whether your friend dies, whether your girl leaves you, whether you're depressed, whatever it is, working harder is almost always the answer. So you know what you need to do. You need to do it. And what's amazing, again, it's kind of like the antidote. If you take the antidote before the poison, then you never get sick in the first place. If you're always working as hard as possible, if you're always working your ass off and trying to be the best version of yourself every single day, then you never get sick in the first place. You're already working. You're already taking the antidote. So things can't get can't uh, attach to you. They can't get hold of you. Working hard is the antidote to everything. So why don't you just do it in advance? Why don't you use your life just become work like mine? Why don't you just dedicate yourself to a cause and get up and do what you're supposed to do every single day? I can't stand quitters. So if you're the kind of person who's going to quit because it's hard, I don't even want your energy around me, right? You need the people who don't quit. I don't quit. Every single facet of my life is testament to the fact that I don't quit. I didn't quit. So that's the difference. When it was hard, I did it anyway. That's who I've always been. And if you don't have that kind of tenacity, you're never going to be anything. So I'm indefatigable. I do not give up. I do not get tired. I do not quit. That's what they want. That's what the enemy wants from me. They want to try and win a war of attrition. They want to wear me down and hope I quit and give up. I am not that guy. I'm not that guy. I'm the guy who keeps going. And if you're truly indefatigable in life and perspicacious, that's my favorite saying, the one I say all the time, unmatched perspicacity coupled with sheer indefatigability makes me a feared opponent in any realm of human endeavor. It's absolutely and utterly true. If you pay attention to the things that are happening around you and you do not quit, you will be a dangerous opponent in any realm of human endeavor. It doesn't matter what you try and do. I'm a man who lives true to God and says what he means and means what he says, and I know that the things I say are good for society and good for the world. I didn't put a magic spell on anybody. The reason people listen to me is because they like what I say and they know that I'm telling the truth. That's the reason I am here, and I'm going to continue to do that, and there's nothing anybody can do about it.